All right, all right, let's do this. What did I do today? That mattered to me at least. <laughs> um, this is overall um, helping out some friends with their um, copywriting skill development and and some overall marketing strategy to go along with that. It's kind of difficult to separate the two because in the the language of of marketing is spoken with copywriting you can't really separate the two that much so it's kind of necessary to learn both at the same time in my opinion but hey it works better that way um See if I can try to remember what we were talking about. I guess we can talk about sort of the mindset shifts that you need to have when you want to start earning higher amounts of money with the skill that you have <coughs> if you treat your and your skill as a low income job then you'll get low income but if you start to treat your skill as a high value skill a uh, high income skill then uh, inevitably you start to have a lot more control over how much money you get because when you treat a skill like this that can be used from any sort of low ticket product you know anything a thousand dollars to below uh, you start to deal with people who who are more replaceable in that sense because as a buyer when you uh, want to buy something that is above a thousand dollars there has to be a higher commitment from your part so to be able to take that sort of person and actually make them decide to to buy something uh, at that price scale so pretty much anything like fifteen hundred dollars and above to infinity um, the copywriter's role in that sort of price field, um, it, you need quite a bit more skill to be able to handle the, those sort of sales. Um, I mean, same thing when you're, when you're closing, you know, but, uh, yeah, I mean, the, there's like a different sort of mindset that you have to have for both cases. When you're copywriting for low, low ticket stuff, um, I'm trying to think of an example. Like if you're trying to sell, I don't know, uh, a toy, a children's toy, <coughs> uh, or a water purifier, which are what maybe 150 hundred dollars uh, when you're selling something like that there's only so much that you can do to appeal to the audience because they're trying to um, see the cost and effect of the different as uh, of the all the similar products that you have like why should the customer buy this brand of water purifiers compared to this other one um, and try to see which one has the most qualities for the lowest price so it's always a competition on price in that sense but as soon as you get to more of a high ticket offer anything above a thousand dollars the psychology of the consumer starts to change 
because when they're starting to invest in that um, amount of money, they know they're not trying to look necessarily for the cheapest offer, but rather focus a lot more on the value that they're getting. Um, like you don't really discount a Ferrari. You start to think what's wrong with it. Instead, there's like a certain expectation that you set of the price has to match the value that they can see in their minds. And when you're selling a high ticket product, essentially you have to be able to um, convert the audience's ideas into to interpret whatever it is that you're selling as higher value. Make them see how this product or this service it has a higher value. <coughs> and to be able to do that, that takes a different level of skill of copywriting. But anyways, um, as, as a copywriter, when you're uh, trying to get, um, well, earn money, you can either approach it as a low ticket, uh, copywriter or a high ticket copywriter. A low ticket copywriter can think about, um, again, like water purifiers and, and copyright for that kind of stuff. And usually, um, these are stuff that you can't really price all too high uh, without having them compare uh, your price for another person's on which one is the lowest basis. Um, like the best chances you got are on Fiverr where you set up your own price. But in most cases for low ticket products, you would essentially work for someone for a for a specific company and write content for them um which is fine it's like a consistent uh flow of of cash but um if you want to start earning more money for the amount of hours that you put in you can either uh, move up in the company but th that can only get you so far you can't really decide the amount of money you're making because after all say if you want to be able to earn ten thousand dollars per month um, thinking about the budget that a the specific company have if it's a company that's selling low ticket products um, their budget for hiring a copywriter may not match with the amount of money that you want to make as a copywriter <coughs> and just the sheer amount of work you have per uh, per deal that you, you strike, um, it's very hard to be able to move up in those um, kind of earnings. So the best model would be to become a contractor, um, a freelancer, and sell your services to um, clients that you choose pretty much. And I guess this is sort of what we were talking about, um, setting up a funnel where you can um, attract the kind of your your ideal clients um, to you, and you can uh, strike up a deal and have maybe um, ten clients per month, each of them paying you a thousand dollars per um, this packet of projects. Mm. So I mean that's a that's the basic way you can start earning um, six figures a year. <sighs> trying to think, there's 
yeah, to be able to do that sort of thing, to change your mindset from, uh, from a job mindset into a partnership mindset, that's really what determines uh, you having um, low income versus high income. Um, yeah, as soon as you have a, a job, you're dependent on someone else for the income that you receive. And if there's someone just as skillful as you, then it costs them that same amount to be able to replace you, if not less. It's kind of like how, um, why am I forgetting English? <laughs> cashiers, it's kind of why how uh, cashiers are, are changing all the time for large market store like Walmart or Hy-Vee it's not the same one that you see for an extended period of time usually they're just changing around um, there is no lucrative value within that uh, sort of task of being a cashier that can even be replaced by a machine you have these self checkout registers so Staying as, uh, staying with a job mindset um, forces you to be replaceable. And if you want to start earning more money, then you don't really have that much control. Uh, you're pretty much at the whims of the at the whim of the CEO. Even if, uh, even if they're pretty nice, they still have to concern themselves about the budget that they have. So overall, uh, staying working for someone isn't the best idea in the long run. It's a good way to start, but not in the long run. Um, so yeah, moving on to uh, a high income mindset where you develop partnerships instead. So <clears throat> say the owner of a business wants to have copy written for them, say like a, a bunch of email listings. Um, they can hire uh, a copywriter, say on, on Fiverr or, or just through uh, a referral that they get. On LinkedIn, maybe. Um, when, as a business owner, uh, you hire a copywriter to write a specific, uh, a specific project, like say, I don't know, ten emails. Essentially, the copywriter would be selling a 10 email packet to the, the business owner and the business develops, uh, the stuff is written and you get any results. If the business owner likes it, they uh, purchase another package and keep going like that. So that's a partnership and the copywriter can just as easily not accept working with the business owner anymore and the same way as the business owner can decide not to buy from you anymore so the power is more equal in that sense and again you can control the price say if you want to start earning ten thousand dollars per project um, think about sort of the budget that a business owner would have um, for, for, for copywriters, um, you would have to start selling your services to, um, a much larger business in that sense. So as soon as you're dealing with larger businesses, your, your copy has to be significantly better. So the more skill that you have, again, the more you earn. 
and there isn't really a limit to how much you can earn especially if you're uh, selling packages then you are in full control about how much work you can you can make which means you can you're in full control of how much money you can make so overall it's just a lot better to be a, a freelance copywriter um, but you do have to develop your skill to that point otherwise without that credibility you it gets kind of tough um, any low ticket job any low income job doesn't require all that much just more of a referral in that sense it's easier to get into a job as a startup copywriter um, so like if you're writing content for a social media account um, there's actually two ways you can approach it um, one is having again the low-income mindset and the other is a high-income mindset low-income mindset you know it's pretty easy to say oh I can write one post for one dollar or for five dollars maybe up to twenty or fifty dollars per post um, depending on how good you are is the amount of money that it's acceptable to charge but again having that sort of low-income mindset on having to work for someone specifically um, it leaves the business owner in full control of the pricing pretty much so again you can st still write posts but with a high income mindset where again kind of copying what uh, Fiverr is doing on setting your own price uh, as a freelancer so to hire your services would mean to yeah again selling a package say right um, right 60 social media posts you know have two of them posted per day um, that's kind of what you would see for like an Instagram account but yeah have sell your services as a package that they can purchase um, that just gives, that just gives you a lot more control so think about changing your mindset from having a low-income mindset to a high-income mindset that way you can be in more control of how much money that you make be a freelancer don't don't just get into a job to start it is fine but after that you you build a sort of a credibility by working with someone in that sense in a low-income job but then you can have that job experience and pretty much set up a, a, a freelance business for yourself and again say hey here's uh, what I've done I've created results for this company and this company stuff like that so you automatically start to treat it as uh, your clients as your partners rather than uh, companies that you work that you've worked for so you do that and you'll start earning a lot more money trust me and for now to speak to you tomorrow probably